and welcome back to part two of our crocheted fan pattern oversized hoodie. In our first, we did the neck, the shoulders, and the body. The link to this will be in the description box first thing. So to continue on, we're going to start with our neck and then we will proceed on to the, to, re to the rest so that we can finish the sleeves and add the hoodie. So, with our stitch marker ready, let's get started. I'm going to bring the camera in up close so that we can uh, start with the center of our neckline. Um, since this is reversible, we're going to make it so that it will be of your choosing. So whatever color you have chosen, whichever one you think looks best on you, we're going to be starting from the back. So um, since this variegated yarn really doesn't have a set, I like this look pattern, I'm just going to go ahead and start in the center front. Okay, this is our shoulders, this is our neckline, so this will be my center back. So let's get our stitch marker and let's get started. I'm excited. So remember this is our neck area, our front and back neck area. This is our shoulder area. So right here where we have the three double crochet, chain two, three in the same stitch. This is our corner stitch. I'd like for you to take your finger and just go right here to this outside area right there. And then we're gonna count this direction, going to the right. Do not count this one, so count the next one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then in that tenth one, place your stitch marker. Uh, the stitch marker is to show you where your first stitch is going to go while you place a slip knot on your hook with a six inch tail. So while doing the stitches for this row, we will not be using these. No, 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 no. <laughs> We're going to go in between, so you're actually picking up the three, let's see, the, the last part of that chain, and then the V of the chain of the row that created the half double crochets, okay? So we're going to go in between the half double crochets right here, like this. Okay? So let's go back to where our marker is. So place your finger on the loop and yarn over. We're going to start off with a standing half double crochet. So go in through that opening and pull up a loop. Remember to keep your finger on that loop on the hook and then yarn over and go through all three. Okay, and that starts us off with a standing half double crochet. Now in the same stitch, do one more half double crochet. And then we're going to do six half double crochets into those nicks, six stitch openings. Could be a little tongue twister there. <laughs> so there's two, three, four, five, and six. Now I'm going to be walking along with you on this row because this row is very critical to make sure that we get the correct stitching in but we also must do our count when we're done. 
Okay, so you notice how far we are from the end right here. Okay, so here in these next two openings, basically right here and right here, we're going to do half double crochet, two together. So place that finger on the loop on your hook, yarn over into the next opening, drop a loop, yarn over the hook again, and into the next opening and drop a loop. You have one, two, three, four, five loops on your hook, yarn over through all of those loops on the hook. That, that's what made a decrease of those two stitches. Now the next three stitches is going to be the same thing. One, two, and three. So yarn over. This is a half double crochet, three together. Okay, and then yarn over. Whoops, I lost my tension. Make sure you don't lose your tension. Okay, yarn over and into that second one. Pull up a loop yarn over and into that third one. Okay, so let's make sure we have the same amount of loops on the hook. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then yarn over, aim that hook down and push your hook away from your work and it'll go all through those stitches easily just like that. Okay, and we're gonna do the half double crochet two together one more time. So this is the last stitch that we were in, so we want to go to this one here and this one here. Okay, so yarn over, remember to control your tension, and pick up a loop, yarn over, and into that next stitch, pick up a loop, one, two, three, four, five, and through all of them. There we go. Okay, and that helped pull this corner in just a little bit. Okay, so I need to turn my work, but because I'm in front of the camera, I'm going to stop just for a second, and then we will continue on. Now, I'd like for you to take note of the last stitch that you did here. We want to go into the next one for our next stitch because sometimes when we do these um, together stitches, your chain will be back here. You don't want to pick up here, you want to go right here. Okay, so let's do one half double crochet into the next 14 spaces. So skip this one, okay, because there's already a stitch in there. So we're gonna go here's one, And two, three, four, five. I'm not going to bore you, so keep on going until you have 14 in total. Okay, so here we are at our corner again. So we're going to do half double crochet, two together. So yarn over, let's go through that space, pull up a loop, yarn over and into the next space and pull up a loop. We have five loops on our hook and we pull it all through. Let's move on to the next one. We're going to do half double crochet, three together. Yarn over into the next space, one, yarn over, two, and then three. Okay, and then yarn over. Uh, we're going to do half double crochet, two together. So here's one, and here's two. Okay, now we are at the the back or the front of our hoodie here. So we're going to do a little bit different than what we just did on the shoulder row. So yarn over, 
we're going to do a half double crochet into the next six uh, stitches. So here's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now into the next stitch, we're going to do two half double crochets. Okay. Then we're going to do seven half double crochets across. Go ahead and do that and I'll meet you for the corner again. So you notice we're at our corner again. So a, a half double crochet, two together. So here's one and two. Half double crochet, three together. One, two, and three. and then half double crochet, two together. Okay, and since we're back on the shoulder, 14 half double crochets in each of the spaces. Okay, so go ahead and do the 14, and I'll meet you so that we can complete the neckline row. So here we are on our last corner. So uh, half double crochet, two together. Now here you'll see that this was the chain that came up. So the spaces on each side does not count we only want to pick up one, okay? So since we're here, so we're gonna skip this one here. There's one. This one will be three together. Two and three. And then our next one is half double crochet, two together. Okay, and then we have seven half double crochets to the end of this row. Go ahead and do that, and I'll meet you there. All right, so we're back here at the beginning of the row. I've removed my stitch marker, and we're going to place a slip stitch into that first uh, chain of the row here. Okay. And I would like for you to chain four. One, two, three, four. Okay? Now, turn your work around. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be going backwards because the neckline is going to fold over and we want the pattern to show when it does fold over. So in that same stitch that we did the slip stitch, double crochet, chain two, okay? Now here's our first one, so we're gonna skip this one and the second one and then single crochet. Chain two, skip two, and into the third one, our V stitch. Double crochet, chain two, double crochet. Okay, chain two, skip two, and in that third one, single crochet. 
Okay, so this is this is our repeat. Single crochet, chain two, V stitch, chain two, single crochet. Whoops, I guess I was out of camera range. So that is this is our, our repeat. It's like our foundation row, like we've been doing all along. I'm gonna show you one more time. Chain two, skip two, okay, V stitch. Now, as you go around, please take note so that you don't have to undo what you've just done between your single crochets and your V stitches. Okay, chain two, skip two, and single crochet. All right, so do that all the way around until you get back over here, and I'll show you how to finish the row off. All right, so I have a confession to make. <laughs> At the end of the row, I had one stitch left over, not two. And I double-checked my count, and apparently I have just one stitch. But it's okay. It's okay. If you have one stitch, that's okay. So after our single crochet, go ahead and chain two. And then we're going to go up two chains and slip stitch. All right. This is the foundation for our neckline. Now, I wanted to point this out also. This is optional. If you just wanted to stop after we did the decrease row with the half double crochet together stitches, that's up to you. Okay? Um, I'm just adding a little decoration to all this. All right. So, because we're now going to start row two of the repeat, let's place a single crochet with a chain two. This counts as our first of seven double crochets on our V stitch. Okay. So here we got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, and then of course, as we did before, single crochet on top of the single crochet of the previous row. Our next, we have our V-stitch again. So let's go ahead and place our seven double crochets into our V-stitch. Oh, my yarn's playing games with me today. <laughs> okay, so there's three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay? And just like we did before. So continue that all the way around. I'll meet you at the end of the row. And basically we're going to be climbing the same way we did um, on the body. Okay, so to close off the beginning of the row and the end of the row. <laughs> I know, never a dull moment on my show, huh? We're going to pick up both of those. Okay, so we picked up the single crochet and picked up the top of that chain two. Yarn over through all of that, and we're going to complete a single crochet. Doesn't that look good? <laughs> okay, so let's chain four, two, three, four single crochet in the middle of the seven chain two and you know what we're going to do now we're going to do our v stitch here in the single crochet down here just like we did for the body and i think you understand this concept here 
So chain two, single crochet in the middle of the seven, chain two, V-stitch on top of that single crochet. So um, what I'm gonna suggest to you is make your neck as long as you would like. Um, since I'm in the beginning stages of making my neck, I will tell you um, in just a second on the video uh, how many rows I completed and then you can do at that many as well so till then um, listen to how many rows I did and then pause your video and go ahead and do these two rows for however many you want remember we're going to end with the scallop um, well the the fan the seven double crochets as that last row so give me just a second i'll tell you how many rows i'm going to do and then uh, you can pause your video so till then hang on <laughs> isn't video awesome all right so i did a total of 16 rows that includes row one and row two, or eight shell fan rows. One, two, three, four, five, wait a second. One, two, three, four, five. Well, I did eight, okay? It's, it's backwards, <laughs> okay? So to end this row will be the same way we ended the row on the body. We've completed our single crochet and then slip stitch. Leave yourself a nice little tail so you can weave in your ends. Okay, and of course remove. Okay, now remember this is on inside out so that you can fold it over. Of course it'll fit differently on your neck and you can have where the right side of the pattern is with the right side of the hoodie so let's move on to our next add-on to our project here so after we finished our neck I made a little swatch to show you what we're going to do for our hood we're gonna to have to sew it on separately. I thought of all kinds of ways to attach this and it just doesn't seem to work well because of the pattern. So, and I wanted to have the scallop that would wrap around your face so that you'd have a nice edging. So, what we're going to do in this little a sample I wanted to show you. We're going to have a big long rectangle where this, our chain stitches, will be our fold where we will seam this shut and then we will take the edge here and it'll go and uh, be hand sewn or slip stitched or something to the neckline of our hoodie. So in this little example you can see how we start off with our shell row and then we go up to the v-stitch row and then onto the shell. So I'm going to show you how to do this step by step and the sizes that we will use. This like I said is just a sample. So let's get started. Let's place a slip knot on our hook with a uh, tail of about six to eight inches. So to begin, I'm going to encourage you to loosely crochet this foundation chain. If you find that you're going to have a hard time with it, you can always move up to the next size hook. Here I'm using a 5.5. And that's the same size. Let's see. Probably, here we go. No, 
oh, this is a 6.5. That way, if you feel that you have your chain is a little too tight, you can always move up to the next hole size. This is the size K, 6.5. Otherwise, you can just go ahead and use your 5.5 uh, hook. So to do that, just take your time and make them a little loose. We're going to start with a chain of 98. Okay, and if you notice too, I'll pinch the chain so that I can get the size, the next size chain that I would like to have. And if you're asking why, 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 it's because of all of the double crochets that are going to go into one of those stitches, it's going to cause our chain to stretch. So we want it to be able to stretch as well. Okay, so I'll see you after 98 chains. So please pause your video. Nice thing about this color. Look at that pretty chain. <laughs> I really like that. All right, so we're going to skip our first chain. And then the second one, single crochet. We're going to skip two chains and into the third one, seven double crochets. All right, I'm going to uh, stop right here, and I'm going to bring the camera in closer, so continue on, and please pause your video. So after we have our double crochets into that one chain, you'll notice that this chain right here has been pulled. So let's take all of our stitches and slide it back so you can see the loop of the previous chain. Hmm, that was weird. My lights flashed. <laughs> okay, so this is our next chain. So we're going to count one, two, and then in the third one, we're going to do a single crochet. All right. And if you notice that I'm, I'm picking up two parts of my chain here. Okay, so here's that little loop I was telling you about. So here's one and two, and into that third one, seven double crochets. Okay, so go ahead and do your seven. Don't wanna bore you while you're watching me. <laughs> And you see here's that little loop I was telling you about. So go ahead and do that, and then we'll start up again. But this is the repeat of our row, is um, seven, skip two, single crochet, skip two, seven, double crochet. So let me finish this one, and I'll show you a repeat one more time, and then we'll go to the end of the row. All right, so I have mine up here. And I'm going to slide those stitches back so I can see the loop. One, two, and into that third one, single crochet. And I had, just like I had just commented before we paused our video, this is our repeat for this row. We're going to end with a single crochet on the very last one. So we single crochet, skip two seven double crochets, okay, then skip two, single crochet, skip two, seven double crochets. When you get down here to the end, that very last chain will be a single crochet, and I'll meet you there, and then we can start row two. Well, that took a little bit of time. At the end, you should have 16 of these seven double crochet scallops all the way around. 
So here we are at the end with our single crochet. We're going to turn our work and I'm going to bring my camera up closer <laughs> so we can start our second row. So to begin our second row, we're going to chain four and then we're going to double crochet in the same uh, single crochet of the previous row. Chain two. We're going to skip one, two, three, and in that fourth one, single crochet. Chain two. Here's our single crochet from the previous row. Let's place our V stitch. Double crochet, chain two, double crochet. Okay, chain two, single crochet in the middle of the seven double crochets, chain two, and V stitch. You can continue this all the way across. When we get to the end of the row, I'll show you how to do uh, the last V stitch there. So here we are in our last single crochet of the row. We're going to do our V stitch. Okay, and this completes our row. So let's chain two, turn our work. This is the flat version. So in the making of this, you're getting two benefits, um, the round version of this stitch and the flat version. <laughs> okay, so the chain two will count as one of the double crochets. So into this chain two space, three double crochets. This is half of the seven double crochets that we need. Okay, and then over to our shell, I mean our single crochet, place a single crochet on top of the previous single crochet. And then here we are in our V-stitch, seven double crochets, Okay, so this is what we have so far. Single crochet over the top of the previous single crochet. And then the seven double crochets, single crochet. Do this all the way across till you get to the end of the row. And I'll meet you here in the first V stitch that we did of this row. So here I am at the end of the row, our beginning V-stitch. So to finish this row, we're going to place four double crochets into this last V-stitch. All right, so here's what our row looks like. So let's move on to our next row. We're going to chain one and turn our work. In the last double crochet that we just did, place a single crochet. It's going to be kind of like what we did uh, for our row two. 
right here. This is row one, this is row two. Okay, so chain two, V stitch in the single crochet of the previous row. Chain two, single crochet in the center of the seven double crochets and V stitch. I think you're going to be catching on pretty quick. <laughs> so I'm not going to bore you too much more of this. Okay, and then chain two and single crochet. When we get to the end of the row here, you'll be ending with a single crochet right here in the top of that chain two. Well, I'll put it back into the camera. I might have to review what I just filmed. <laughs> All right, and I'll meet you there. This is what we have at the end of this row. Let's move on to the next one. And I think you're, you're picking this up pretty good. So we're going to chain one, just like we did down here. And we're going to start, turn our work, we're going to start adding our double crochets. So in the very end one right here, I'm going to single crochet. So single crochet on top of that single crochet. And then come on over to the, um, the V stitch and let's place in our seven double crochets. Okay, and then we'll single crochet on top of the single crochet, seven double crochets, and we'll do that all the way across. And I think you pretty much have that down pat, but I'll show you how to start the next row uh, in case you have forgotten. And I'll just take a second on to show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and do this all the way across, and I'll meet you at the end of the row and show you how to start our V stitch row again. I have single crocheted the last of this, and I'm going to show you how to start the V-stitch row again, and then I'm going to encourage you to do the, the width. I'm figuring we need about 10 or 11 inches in total for the hood, remembering that we will stop on the scallop or the seven double crochets as our very last row. So let me show you how to go on to our next row, just like we did right down here. We're going to chain four. And turn our work. And in that first stitch right here, double crochet. Chain two and then single crochet and chain two and then v-stitch in the previous single crochet uh, I mean of the previous row okay so I'm not gonna show you anymore on how to start each one of these rows um, this is the back side so let's show you the pretty side <laughs> um, continue on um, like I said, I'm, I'm in the making of this. I have no clue, but um, in just a few seconds, I will tell you how many rows I chose to do. Um, and if you choose to do that many rows, I encourage this. Remember too that the, the hood is optional. Um, you can, just like the neckline, you can add it or you don't have to add it. So, give me a few minutes here. <laughs> and on the video, of course, and I will show you how many rows that I've done, and then we'll uh, continue on and finish adding the hood to our um, hoodie sweater.
All right, the wonders of the video. <laughs> now this took a little bit of time and I have to confess it's longer than 10 inches. I had um, a hoodie that I used the measurements from and found that I really needed this to be a little bit longer. So there's actually uh, 24 rows here. If you count the seven double crochet and the V stitch, one row each. But if you combine those two, there's 17 sets. So to count, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen. That's the row of the seven double crochets. So if we double that to include the V-stitch, there's actually 24 rows here. Right? 17 and 17. Isn't that 24? Oh, 34 rows. <laughs> yeah, I know my math is off, isn't it? So, now that we got this done, remember the scallop edge will be around your face and the straight edge is the center back. So, when we finish, I'm encouraging you to leave a long um, length of yarn, about 24 to 30 inches. What that will be doing is we're going to sew, this is the neckline area, this is the center back. So this is going to sew just this neckline to our um, the base of the hoodie, and then we're going to get another piece of yarn and we're going to sew the center of the hood and then another one for the uh, the other side of the neckline. So let's get started on that. I'm going to encourage you to take your right sides and place them together. If you're not familiar with the right and wrong side, the side that looks what I consider not really attractive compared to the front side, which looks attractive, and it's also what you see when you create the stitch. This will be your right side, so place it facing up on your table, then fold your piece in half. You should have your wrong side facing you, and then we're gonna start sewing right here where we did our chain stitch and all these um, seven double crochets into a chain stitch. We're gonna be sewing along that edge. So go ahead and get a piece of yarn, mm, I would say about 24 inches long, and let's get started there. So for those of you who are not familiar with threading a large eye needle, place your yarn between four fingers and pull the yarn up from the bottom and pinch that yarn over the top of the eye of the needle. Pull the eye out and then work it over that folded yarn. If you try it with this end, it has a tendency to unravel depending on the eye of your needle. So go ahead and pull it through. And then we'll take our other end. Now we're gonna start down here where our open end is. If we start at the other end and it comes out uneven, then you have to redo it. So let's go ahead and start down here. We're going to pick up into some of this bulk of the stitch from both sides and pull it through. And we're going to make a square knot or a knot to, to begin. Okay. This one that we have, that's our actually beginning, we're going to weave that in later. So, as we go along, you'll notice that each one of these seven double crochets will line up with each other. So we're going to come into the bottom of those stitches, and we're, we're going to do what is called a whip stitch. So we're going to go through, and then bring your yarn over the top, and you're going to basically take your needle and go away from you. So here I'm going in between in the chain 
between the stitches and I'm going to pick up in the chain on the other side. As you go along, if you find that your, um, your double crochets don't line up, line them up and, and then stitch over them. So go ahead and do that all the way down to the other end. And when we get down there, I'll show you how to attach it to your um, the base of your hoodie here. So here we have the V stitch. And here I'm back at my seven double crochets on the other side of our first one here. Alright, so please pause your video. I'll meet you right here at the end. At the end, you're going to see I'm going to leave just a little bit open. If you go all the way to the end, you're going to have a point. I'm not really into points, so this will make it so that you have not a point just by leaving that open. So let's go ahead and do a couple of wraps here. Okay, and then we're going to come back and weave this end in. So since we're right here where the seven double crochets are, I'm going to go back under a piece of yarn and then I'm going to go through the center of those double crochets. And what I'm showing you now is the same thing that we'll be doing with the little um, the little tail here on the end. So go through all that and pull it through. Then go over one stitch because we're going to go back through the same area but sometimes if you don't go over one to kind of catch it you could pull out all of the stitching that you just put in. So go ahead and go back. This is what they call weaving in the stitch. Now everybody has a different way of doing things, but this is how I do it and it holds up very well for me. Okay, so I'm going to go over that one stitch. I'm going to go back through it one more time. Okay, and then you want to wiggle it so you can get as much in there as possible. And then I'm just going to cut a little tiny bit extra because it, this will end up working itself in anyway. Okay, and then we're going to flip it so that we have our right side out facing. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to sew on our hood to our um, the base of the hoodie. And like I said before, all these loose strands, let's go ahead and weave those in as well. Now I know you're admiring all the yarn that's in my room. Now turn your eyes back <laughs> to our project. Don't, don't look at the yarn over here. Where's it at? Over here. Don't look at that and don't look at this. <laughs> okay, so here we have our center back. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to sew our hood along this line here. Okay, and when we do that, we're also going to be bringing the open ends closed as we sew on this hood. So I'd like for you to go ahead and place a stitch marker right here in the center back. And then we have the right side of our hood. See, here's our, this is our right side. So flip it over 
so that the wrong side is facing us because you know when you pull it up the right side will be showing and our hood will be starting our sew line right center line center back okay so let me take this out place it into the center and then to the center and this is where we're going to start sewing around and with all this yarn that we had left we're going to carefully line it up and place more stitch markers around as we go around till we come here to the front and this is where we're going to start our sewing so let's get our stitch markers out and start putting them in the nice thing about this being on a mannequin is that it makes it so I can lay it flat to it as well so here I have another stitch marker as I go around Here I got a, a blue stitch marker. And then I got right here we want to pick up at that single crochet. Okay, now to make sure that we have the same placement for the other side, we want to bring the other bottom half of our hood lining up the center back okay remember we're going along this line right this line right here Are you getting excited? I know I'm excited. <laughs> Can't wait to wear this. Okay. I know at the filming of this, this is uh, February 2021. And we're getting some crazy weather this year. A lot of snow, <laughs> a lot of ice, a lot of Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. And so the last one will go into that single crochet. Let's see, where's he at? There it is. Okay, and we also want to double check to make sure it's balanced. So if it's not right, we can move what we have to move. Okay? But this is what it will look like also after the hood is sewn on. And let me, let me flip it around. So here you can see the back of the hood as well. I think it looks really nice. So, okay. So as before, what we're going to do is when we put our whip stitch in it, you want to join and close these openings as well as we go around okay so go ahead and do that after we complete this we're going to add um, a string with pom-poms and then we'll start our sleeves one thing that I have found is that in the sewing of this you want to sew it from the inside so that you can grab the part of that V stitch, the hood, and that bottom stitching in the row. Oops, it was too high, sorry. So it's better to sew it from the inside of the hoodie instead of on the outside doing a whip stitch here. 
hope that helps. Let's go ahead and sew it on and then we can continue on. Okay, so here we have the hood sewn on. I'm going to walk you around and you can see how it looks in the back there and this nice scallopy edges. Isn't that pretty? Okay, okay, I'm going to show you my collection of yarn. I ain't done yet. <laughs> Yes, I have quite a collection. Say hi to Elsa. Quite a collection of yarn. Some of it I have organized and some I haven't. So let's get back to this. <laughs> Next, we're going to go ahead and create, um, if you want, this is optional, a chain stitch with a little pom-pom on the end. So that way, if you have the hood on, you could uh, close it tight. So to make the, the ties for the hood, you want to take the band off of your yarn and we're going to use the outside, this is the last, yeah, and the inside one so that we can have two chain, two strands to make this chain, okay? And I'm going to encourage you to leave a good maybe eight to ten inches and then place it on a uh, slip knot on our hook. And I'm going to pull out a bigger hook here. This one is a 6.5 millimeter. And we're going to start chaining. See how we have a nice big chain? Um, let's go ahead and start chaining, and I'll let you know in a second how many chains I added onto mine. So I chained 130, and I'm going to leave myself a nice long tail. And I'm going to finish this off. So, the, like I said, this is optional. So the next thing we're going to do is create a little tassel. So I'm going to wrap it around my fingers. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, and down here we'll cut this. We're going to take our tail Bring it through. This is from our chain. And then place an overhand knot on the top. Now, a lot of other people have ways of doing things. This is just what I do. If you prefer another way, please um, do it that way. I know I'm, I'm not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, here, let's tighten this up a little bit more. There we go. Okay. And then we'll take the same strand and bring it down and wrap it. Here we have one tassel. So back to our hoodie. 
Let me come over here on the other side. I'm going to insert through these hole openings here. And we're going to continue all the way around until we come out over here. You know, sometimes I amaze myself. It came out just the way I wanted it to. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and center this onto our hood so that we have the tassel at the same length. Looking good. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is add the tassel to this. And we'll move on to our next step, adding the sleeves. Sometimes I amaze myself. <laughs> Looking good. Let's start our sleeves. Okay, now. Whoops. I hit the camera. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, to make it easy when we start the second sleeve, I want you to, or I would like for you to put uh, a stitch marker in. Remember the chain stitch that we did? that we added so that we can widen the amount. I'd like for you to place a stitch marker in the center, right there where that single crochet is. Okay, and we're gonna do it onto the other side as well. I have a lot of stuff on my desk here. <laughs> okay. So that way you'll know where to start at. Okay, so go ahead and place a slip knot on your hook with a six or eight inch tail so we can weave that in later. And let's start our sleeves. So for filming purposes only, I'm going to place this pillowcase on the inside so it doesn't confuse you with the stitches that are already completed. I know sometimes on the camera we can see it and sometimes we can't but this is only for me for filming so you can see what's going on okay so let's place our slip knot on our hook okay so we noticed here that the last row we did had the seven double crochets that means the beginning of this row is going to start off with um, Well, call me a liar. <laughs> yes, it's a blooper. <laughs> Sometimes I have to laugh at myself. I forgot this is the uh, the corner. So we're okay. <laughs> we're still going to start off with the, the V-stitch. Um, so where our stitch marker is, we can go ahead and take that out. And because of the way I am, I do not pick up one piece of yarn. I like to have some bulk. So go into the center of that single crochet and let's start off with a single crochet. Chain two, and then into the center of the V-stitch, do a V-stitch. Double crochet, whoops. What did I just do? <laughs> oh. Okay, so double crochet, chain two, double crochet, and you'll notice that I'm going through the center of the V-stitch from the previous row. Okay? So right here, I'm not going to pick up that end. I'm going to go down a little bit more. Oh, here, first chain two. And then we're going to pick up, make a single crochet right here. Okay, chain two. Well, oh, call me a liar again. Let's back up. I know. I didn't plan this out very well, did I? <laughs> 
So let's jump over this and into the into the uh, center of um, yeah this single crochet, chain two, and then into that single crochet the V stitch. Sorry I confused you. <laughs> okay, chain two, single crochet. Okay, let me see if I can turn my work here. All right, and I think you have the idea of what we're supposed to do on this row right here. So, V-stitch. And then the single crochet in the center of the seven. So go ahead and do that all the way around, and I will meet you back over here in the corner, and hopefully I won't confuse you again. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so I completed the single crochet and the V-stitch, chain two, single, we're going to skip this two right here and single crochet right here in that opening, chain two, and then the V-stitch from the previous row, go through the center. chain two. Okay, we're going to go directly into a single crochet on top of that previous single crochet. And this will start our um, seven double crochet row. So we have this, start our seven double crochets, and you know what to do next. Seven double crochets, single crochet, seven double crochets go all the way around and we're going to do this for a few rows and then we're going to start the decrease i'll let you know how many rows in just a second so go ahead and do that so please pause your video and i will see you in just a second so we completed the first row of scallops. So we're going to do one more set, which is the row of the V-stitch and the row of the seven double crochets. But I wanted to remind you on how to get started. So we're going to chain five and then single crochet in the middle, chain two and then V-stitch into the single crochet of the previous row. Okay, and then to, to remind you again as well is when we come here to the end, we will single crochet, chain two, double crochet, and then chain two and slip stitch into the third chain, and then go ahead and single crochet, and then the seven double crochets and that'll help us to um, do those two rows and I'll meet you at the end of those two rows where we will start our row of tapering all right so what we're going to do I wanted to draw a basic sleeve so in this case a basic sleeve is like this. If you were to cut that out in fabric, you would stitch along this edge to create the two. We are right here, okay? Because this section here has already been completed when we did our neckline and shoulders, okay? And you'll notice that if you've tried it on already, it hung over your shoulders just a little bit. So in order to get this taper that we need for our, our uh, upper arms down to our wrist, we need to start removing the seven double crochets. 
So this is what I came up with to remove <laughs> the one set of seven double crochets. Now I'm leaving my stitch marker here because this is our underarm, the center of our underarm. This will be your guide so that every time you decrease, you should be in line with our stitch marker. Okay, and I put this fabric here so it's not confusing with the underside of the sleeve that we have here. Okay, so normally we would have put seven double crochets here. Well, we're not going to do that. We're going to combine this single crochet, the center of this, and this single crochet into one so that we're going to eliminate this right here. Okay, so this is going to end the row every time we do the seven double crochets, not the V-stitch row, the seven double crochet row. So insert through the one, you can come over the top and go through that hole and go over the top and in through that single crochet so that we have what looks like a bunch of chains wrapped on our hook. Okay, then snug everything up, yarn over the hook, and through all of this collection here. I know it's going to take a little bit of finagling with it, and then we complete our single crochet. And you notice how we have, we have a collection here, but it's not bad looking. Okay, so now we're going to start our V-stitch row. So, chain five, okay, and then into the center, single crochet, chain two, and basically do the same thing that we've been doing all along. Okay, and then as you know, when we get here and we single crochet, chain two, and then place our double crochet in, chain two, and slip stitch, that will go ahead and create another place for us to do our um, decrease on the next row. So as you can see, we'll start to decrease this from 20 inches down to six inches as we go per row. Okay, so before you get all excited, let me go ahead and start on this sleeve in case we need to do a row where we need to keep it even for maybe one or two rows and then start our decrease again. I don't think we'll have any issues. Um, I have confessions to make. I usually create these things as I go along and Thanks to video, it kind of helps me to uh, work out the bugs so that you can do it as well. All right, so go ahead and let's do this row and add your seven double crochets. When you get to the end of this row, let's see what our measurement is and then we'll decide on if we need to just do a regular row and then the next row decrease. Let's see how this beginning starts because the length of our arm, we want the end row to be down here. So the length of our arm, we have, I think, where's my ruler? We have about 14 inches that we want to create this decrease on. So let's see how this row does and see what kind of a decrease it gives us. And then um, we'll determine if we're going to do our decrease every single row. All right. So go ahead and do those two and I'll meet you right here. So please pause your video. All right. I have an answer for you. So one row will be decrease when we do our V-stitch row, and one row will be a regular 
everything around row. And we will be doing this for a all the way down until we get five scallops and that will fit around our wrist. All right, so this row was our decrease row. This row with our V stitches in it will be where we add our double crochets. And we will continue on doing that same pattern as I showed you for decreasing and then regular, decreasing and regular, okay? So continue doing that until you have a row of five scallops left all the way around, and that should be long enough for it to fit at your wrist. So pause your video and I'll meet you there. All right, here we go. This is what our finished tapered arm will look like. I found, like I had suggested before, you do the decrease row and then do one regular row. So if on that decrease row you have, as an example, 10 seven uh, double crochet scallops, the little fans, the next row you will do 10 scallops. The decrease row, nine scallops, nine scallops, and so on. I finished it down here with two rows of five and it came out to be just the right length just the right everything i got lucky on this one didn't i <laughs> so uh i'm really excited about this um i hope you are too so for video purposes so that i can get this video out today this is our completed hoodie sweater. The um, fan stitch oversize hoodie. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial and I hope you enjoy the scallops that are on the end. You see, I haven't taken out some of my stitching and everything. I was trying to hurry up and get it done. Um, on the turtleneck, of course, that is optional. Just like the hood is optional. Okay, this one, I need to add my sleeve. But I really hope you enjoyed this. So, next time, come on back. Let's see what else we can crochet. I'm so excited, I can't even talk. <laughs> so, until next time. Bye-bye.